One of the things that's uh, interested me also a lot in the last uh, few years is um, just observing really closely what um, presenters, on, uh, particularly on the radio, do. And it seems to me um, a lot of them sit on the BBC do a great job. Uh, although I have uh, done previous some bits on Gary Richardson, who is um, one of the BBC sports reporters, who I think sometimes misses the point um, a little bit. But anyway, um, one of the things that I notice happens quite often is that um, the uh, person running the show, the presenter, rather than asking questions to the guest, because let's face it, the guest is there, they've presumably got some unique uh, insight to bring to bear. Often they haven't got that much time. So it makes sense that the um, you know the uh, interviewer gets the best out of them and asks good questions. But what I find happens sometimes is the what they will do is they will almost like try and top the anecdote. So the guest says something and then rather ask you another question to probe more deeply. What the presenter will do is sort of, you know, almost like tell a story about themselves. Um, and one of the people I find does that a lot is Richard, the Reverend Richard Coles, and he does a programme on um, Radio 4 on Saturday mornings. Um, it's called Saturday Live, strange enough. Um, it's the long tradition of sort of BBC magazine programmes, um, Radio 4 on Saturday morning. Um, now, one of my uh, greatest achievements, I think, in life is when I was a student um, with a friend at the end of the summer holiday, we cycled from uh, Workington on the west coast um, of England to Tynemouth on the east coast. Um, and I have looked this up, excuse me, just looking away. So that's about 118 miles. Uh, it's supposed to take about 10 hours, according to Google Maps. Uh, it took us quite a bit longer. I think that's because my friend slowed me down. <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. I hope he doesn't ever hear this. Um, in fact, in the end, I think we did it actually in about 20 hours. I mean, there was some, we had some pretty horrible weather uh, some of the time. And that's an average speed of about five miles an hour. So that's very, um, very, very poor. Um, I suppose because partly we had not very good bikes in those days. Um, so uh, there's an excuse. Now, uh, just coming back to Reverend Richard Coles, there was a, a programme on the other week and Gary Lineker was the guest. And I always think he's a really good guest because he's, he's got things to say. He's very uh, intelligent, very insightful. And he was talking about um, his relationship with his dad, who died recently. And one of the things he was saying, he'd always got on well with him, but uh, particularly as his dad, um, you know, the death was approaching, his dad became a bit more forthcoming. Um, and he talked a lot about that, very um, very tender, very lovely, um, him talking about that. Um, and uh, what happened was then that day, Richard Coles then, it felt to me he should have asked more questions, but... He and to be fair to him, it was raw for him because I think his sister-in-law, um, who's very fond of her, died um, quite recent to that. So it's completely understandable. He he kind of had that was very much on his mind. Um, but one of the things that made me think about was, um, you know, if I was in the situation with the interviews, um, what could I tell to top uh, the interviewer? Uh, and in the highly unlikely event, I thought of me interviewing someone like, say, Heston Blumenthal. So he's done triple cooked chips, snail porridge, bacon and egg ice cream, parsnip cereal, mock turtle soup, uh, which apparently is a multi-sensory experience. He's done meat fruit and uh, sweet shop petty fours, to just name uh, but many. And he's also obviously, you know, got the, um, the restaurant near Marlowe. And I was thinking, so for me, well, I once made a raspberry uh, sort of tray bake. That was all right. Um, and I can do a passable chilli. So all in all, if I think I was interviewing Heston Blumenthal, I'd keep quiet. Uh, supposing I interviewed Adele. Well, she's an MBE. I don't know. I think she's from 30, actually. Grammy Awards. Uh, she, I understand just looking at uh, Wikipedia. Net worth of over 150 million. She's also well known for doing fantastic acts of um, philanthropy as well. Um, so not only a highly successful musician in terms of um, artistry and uh, commercial point of view, she's also uh, obviously a really good person as well. So, well, I can knock out 
an almost recognisable version of Dylan's Knocking on Heaven's Door, but on balance, yeah, I'd probably shut up about that as well, I'd say quiet. Uh, but of course then I thought I might be interviewing Chris Froome. Chris Froome, the professional cyclist, he won the Tour de France uh, two years in a row, most recently in 2017. So that's a 21-stage race, uh, takes place across 2,200 miles. Uh, Froome did this in 86 hours at an average speed, an average speed of 25 miles an hour. Or, to put it another way, if he joined me and my mate um, cycling from uh, Workington to Tynemouth, um, if we started at 10 o'clock in the morning, when he would have finished about 3 o'clock on the same day. Um, and in that time, me and my mate would have got to a place called Abbey Town, which even, isn't even as far as Carlisle. Um, so, you know, on balance, I think I'd stay quiet about that as well. <laughs> 